Hello guys, it is with a really heavy heart that I have to announce this bad news. My favorite green gloves are leaving me. They served me well, we've been together in good times, in bad times, but it is time to say goodbye to them. We loved each other, they went into fire for me and they were always loyal and friendly, touch screen friendly. They would do anything for me, but it is time to say goodbye. Goodbye, my beloved gloves. I will never forget you. Rest in peace. I miss them so much already. I don't think that ever, ever any gloves will take their place in my heart. Oh, hello there. <laughs> How you doing? All right, let's go have some fun together. Let's go. guys so welcome back to the 1966 uh, GT6 restoration we are making some good progress here in the last episode we prefit the seal we prefit this part and now we have a decent door gap everywhere except here at the bottom where we're gonna have to adjust the door a little bit there is additional skin here that has been added I don't even know how yet I'm I'm guessing with rivets and stuff like on the other side so the rest of the gap is going to be adjusted by the door when we're fixing the door. But now that we have all these shells installed here with clickers, we can take them in and out as we want, but we can use them as a reference to keep repairing our floor inside, our inner seal and our strengthener piece. Even here we need to do some repairs still. So I'm going to take the door off because we don't need it here anymore. And then we're gonna get crackalacking. All right, so I think I'm gonna start with this repair here. I wanna remove the seal and repair this flange here underneath. And maybe we're gonna keep going down and repair the bottom of this panel because it's all rotten. The inner A post, whatever it is called. But here, as you know, I have the holes for my reference, for my height of the seal. So that's why I measured from this deck up six inches and I marked where it is here and here. So now I can take this out, repair this, put it back and measure again six inches and I can drill my new holes for the screws because I'm gonna lose them. So I'm gonna take this seal out and I'm gonna clean this area to see how far up I need to go with the repair. This metal here is pretty pitted so I think I'm gonna replace it at least up to the pressings here. Here I'm gonna go down under this pressing because I don't wanna disturb them, but we'll see, I'll clean it up first. Some people mentioned about these uh, surfaces here that they are pressed in, and yes, they were pressed in. When I read the comments on YouTube, I realized that I didn't show this repair. It was pushed in, but I pulled them out, so now they're in the right place. and still my door needs to come out a little bit more. I know I can do a shim, but normally you could do that with the hinge as well. So anyways, we're gonna get back there at some point, but now let's focus on this. All right, so that's where we stand. Like all this is pitted, so I'm gonna go up to solid metal and only here I'm gonna try to avoid uh, disturbing the this pressing. Not that we can't make it, but we're gonna waste too much time. So I'm gonna cut it under it and we will see if it is too thin we might go higher and make this shape, but I'll try to avoid it. Here I'm gonna cut also part of this on this side because here it is rotten. So I'm gonna replace for now just this vertical line here just so I can 
finish this flange nicely. But I'm thinking that when I cut this out, maybe it's a good idea to, to repair this panel first, which is pretty bad. <laughs> but we will see, like, let's, like here I don't wanna make a plan because things are gonna happen as they come. So let me cut this out and then we're gonna assess a little bit better this underneath and see what we're gonna do there first. All right, so there's not much left here that we can reference to, you know, <laughs> but I'm sure we can do it. We can actually take a look at the other side and we made this part out of many small parts, but if you think about it, it is basically two planes with a transition in the middle. This here is one plane. Then this is another plane here, this area, and there's a transition piece in the middle. So that's, oh, I don't know, maybe we can just make it out of three pieces. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> okay, okay, I just realized I made a mistake and I had to cut this piece off, but good thing it was only welded here. This was only tacked in place, so it was easy to take it out. And uh, I'll show you why I took it out. All right, so I took it out because that's how it was. I was trying to figure out how to build this piece and I realized that this flange is straight up to here, but then from here, all of the sudden, it comes out. I don't know if you can see it like this, but it comes out. Like, if you look from this side, you can see how it goes out. And then I looked at the other side, and I don't know if you can notice from here, but this pressing is not a straight line. And I didn't realize that when I was repairing this one. And I put it as a straight line, but actually it needs to be like this, this end needs to go that way. And also my boat here wasn't fitting very well. So now I need to trim there a little bit more and push this in which is gonna open a gap here, but we're gonna fix that. But yeah, it needs to be adjusted, something like that, but further in. So let me play a little bit with it and I'll show you what I came up with. Okay, so moved it a little bit. And now, like I said, we opened the bigger gap here, but that's fine. We're gonna fill this up with a piece of metal later but it looks much better. And now this is further in and even the boat, the boat fits better now. So now we can proceed with our repair here. And what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with one patch from here all the way till the end, because that's pretty much a flat piece with the only exception of this part here where we have this pressing with this little channel here but we've done that before, we've done it on the other side, I've done it on my GT6, so I've done this repair many times. So I'm gonna make this piece first and then we're gonna try to build this part here. Okay, that's more or less there. Actually, I can do this, right? Yeah. Okay, this flange is way too long. We're gonna shorten this. So that's how much it sticks down, actually. So yeah, so now we just need to make this shape here. But 
we need to stretch a lot of metal here. Let's pre-stretch it on the planishing hammer. Okay, I'm gonna put this die with the highest crown. Okay. We won't be able to go that deep with the die, but at least we're gonna be able to pre-stretch it here a lot, and then with the hammer, we're gonna finish it. So we're gonna stay only inside this area. Ooh, need a glove. <laughs> like a glove, like my green gloves. <laughs> oh, not really. Well, this is a little bit too wide, but that's fine. We can try to straighten it. And this is a little bit too narrow here. You see, this line was supposed to be a little bit further out. For this side, it's fine. Okay, I can straighten this line and bend it a little bit further out. And this I'm gonna try to narrow a little bit. Well, something that I didn't film again, but I just repaired this corner here, added a little bit of metal, so the flange is one continuous piece, and I cut this metal here. Again, I didn't press the recording button or I pressed it in the wrong time, so <laughs> I'm sorry, but nothing interesting, right? So now we painted the flanges and now I can weld this in place. I actually tucked it and then I realized that I didn't uh, paint. All right, I think that's enough for now. We're gonna finish welding everything at the end. I just wanna keep making patches for here. All right, so now to, to keep building here, the bottom A post or whatever this panel is called, I need to be able to know where to finish it. Um, here in this end at the bulkhead. But the bulkhead is missing, <laughs> you know? So I'm not uh, really sure where I should end it. So for this reason, I put the seal and I brought my template here for the cup. And that's like this. So this is, has to line here and that's something like that. By this steel not very clear so you know what i think i'm gonna have to rebuild the bulkhead first or at least part of it in order to be able to to finish this inside oh my god this corner is a nightmare <laughs> so anyways here you can see how the bulkhead makes a big step in order to accept this and that's how it was. I didn't make that. I think I'm gonna have to flatten that. And here, remember I unbent this flange and I bent it a little bit higher. It looks like I have to go a lot more. I need to go to where the black line is. That's where I need to bend it. And also I have to unbend the top flange and make it wider a little bit. So, yeah. That's a corner of hell here. <laughs> so I'm gonna take the seal out again. I'm gonna do this work on this corner and then we're gonna bring it back and we will see what we can do about the bulkhead. That's, hmm. So I unbent it like here. You see now we have a pretty much a parallel line and we have a square 
angle here, which I think is the right thing. But now also this flange needs to come to this point. You see where I put the line up to here. So this is where the flange needs to end. So we need to make it somehow go there. Let me show you what it needs to look like. So this is what it needs to look like. You see where this line finishes, also the flange finishes in the same spot. But it's not like this on the other side. I wonder whether I should make a template from here. Okay, so I took a pattern from the other side and it actually matches pretty well here as well. So we're gonna use that to maybe transfer it on a piece of metal like this and then we're gonna use it as a template here. All right, so I transferred the pattern. Yes, it's Taylor Twelve box. <laughs> And I transferred the pattern to this piece of metal and now we can just flip it upside down and try and bend this in the loop in the new place. All right, that's better now, you see? They both end where the bulk head should be. <laughs> so now let me make a piece for here. So we're gonna replace a piece somewhere to here and here. Maybe from here, we're gonna go up and around, but now we can follow this shape of the seal. We have a very smooth bend here that needs to continue here. So, so we're going to cut just below. We don't want to go into the bend. And then we're going to come here. Eh, we will see. So I made this pattern for this piece here. I'm going to just do this repair for now. We're going to do the rest later. It's easier, so something like this. I'm gonna make it a little bit wider. I cut my pattern a little bit too short, but I'm gonna make it a little bit wider here. Not to that hole. This is a rivet hole, this is okay, but a little bit longer here to cover this rotten area. So this metal here needs to be cut here and we're gonna bend this this way. Okay, so this way we can come a little bit further out here with this. Okay, that's good actually. And I can transfer this to a piece of metal now like this here. I'm gonna leave it longer because I need to make a flange for the bottom here. And this is where we're gonna leave it longer, like we said, to cover these holes. Okay, so I made the bend here for this flange there, and I bent it here just with my fingers so far. And that's a good starting point. Now from here, we're gonna have to start shrinking, I guess, and stuff. Uh, we actually have to shrink here, this corner, you see? We have to shrink it and we have to stretch here a little bit to make like a bulk. And we have to make a bend here more. The center of this radius. So it's tricky, but let's see what we can do. Okay, so we want this to go down, so... Like this. I think it moved. In the meantime, we want the radius here, right? 
that we said the, this is the center line of this radius, right? So we keep going at it. So, so far, so good. This side, up to here, we're good. But now here we need to bend more this and we need we need to bend it this way and this way this means that here in this area we need to stretch the metal or shrink here well first of all we are too high so i'm gonna cut it a little bit lower because we don't need that high we need we need to be somewhere here right we're gonna cut it here so we can shrink it the shrinker is gonna shrink it but it's gonna also flatten it hmm. I don't want to flatten it like this So that's much closer. Can I actually try and bend it more and maybe it is gonna work without shrinking. It should anyways. Okay. I'll try to hammer shrink it here. getting there actually that's pretty good okay I tucked it in place it looks pretty well the thing is it moved a little bit here at the bottom I didn't realize and I had it tucked already so it moved by probably quarter inch in that orientation but since everything else fits perfectly I'm not really worried about that the only thing is that the cup is gonna overlap just a little bit here you know it's not gonna overlap too much here in this area but it's gonna overlap and we're gonna weld around the cup anyways so it's fine so i'm gonna weld it and grind it i'm gonna take the seal off i guess it's gonna be easier if i take it off i'm gonna weld it and grind it uh, i'm gonna leave this for later i'm gonna come back to this part here where we started this morning and, <laughs> and we kept cutting and cutting and cutting and now we can actually start putting stuff together okay it's welded and ground down um it's gonna need a little bit more grinding here and touching up but i'm not gonna do that now when i take the body off the frame then i'm gonna work a little bit on the bulkhead here we're gonna clean this with uh, wire wheel etc etc there's body filler here still so there might be more issues here if there's body filler you know <laughs> but again for now that's what we need here this part and we have it so we can continue working on our bottom of the a post okay so this whole procedure was so i can make a pattern like this that Okay, one hand it is hard to do it, but you know what I mean? Okay, I put a clamp under there so it can hold my pattern, but you see what I mean? Now I have a pattern that follows the shape of the bulkhead. So if I pull it out, that's what it is. So now we just need to make it out of metal. Okay, so this is my pattern. That's how it was, right? This is the shape that I'm interested in, but, but I cut it off because that's gonna represent only one of my 
planes. You know how I showed you in the beginning of the video. So that's gonna be my piece. And now I'm gonna mark a flange on the other side. So that's how it goes. So this is a little bit too long. So we're gonna shorten it here. It would be great if we it would be great if we had a template like this, but I don't want to make another one. So I'm just going to bend it with the pliers a little bit at a time. <laughs> Only in Rusty Beauties, clamping stuff to the vise. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the, a nice height for me to work on. Of course, this here is going to be harder because this flange needs to shrink. That's fine. We can make it uh, wiggly and then shrink it later. Well, that's how much I could bend it on the shrinker because now it doesn't work. But I can keep going here like this. I'm going to have to do it manually. All right, so this is what we came up with. I kept beating it here with the hammer on the rounded part of the vise. I kept bending it, this flange kept coming out of course, and I kept uh, shrinking it with the hammer. So I think I came up with some interesting shape here. So if we put this there, like this, and we pull this this way, this flange now matches with the bulkhead so we can spot weld it the part of this flange that we need to be down is only up to this seam so somewhere here this now we can straighten up because it needs to match this flange from here here we are at the exact level see And that represents one of our surfaces. Now we can cut off the rust and extend this piece to fit this piece, but we're gonna leave a gap here because they're not gonna be at the same level. And I'll show you what I mean. Let me cut this off now. We don't need it anymore. Okay. So this level here matches, so we can extend this piece to go there, but if you look at this level here now, it's coming, it's coming further in than this. So here we're gonna have a transition piece. So that's gonna be interesting. This piece here, we're gonna cut like this. I've never done this approach before to this repair, and it's gonna be interesting. Okay, let's make a template again. Oh, I'm running out of paper. I need to buy another box of beer. So, I transferred the pattern to metal and I cut this piece and I bent it. So now this profile matches this profile here. And you see how this is on the same level here but here they're not on the same level and this is where we're gonna need this transition piece so i hope that makes sense now what i've been doing so far <laughs> i think it's about time to tuck both patches in place well i bent this one i have to 
this one I have to cut and then we're gonna make the last transition piece which is gonna be tricky so I'm gonna take this out for now and I'm gonna paint the flanges I'm gonna paint inside here where we're not gonna have access after and we're gonna go from there by the way I have the door open <laughs> It's not too warm still, but it's 11 degrees Celsius. So there's still snow here, you see? Still snow that hasn't melted yet, but soon we're gonna have the garage door open permanently. Anyways, let's see where we stand here. So I tucked them in place and now you see what I mean by uh, that transition piece that we need to make well I should have rounded this corner here and here these here look too close so I'm gonna cut this a little bit let's see if I can mark it like this yeah yeah so we're gonna trim this a little bit further something like that this shape is absolutely made up by me <laughs> it's not I'm not following anything, like I'm following the concept, not the exact shape. And here, we're gonna round this. We should have done that earlier, but anyways, now I have to do it in the car. And once, and once we round them, then we can make a pattern for this opening here. Okay, I reshaped it a little bit here and here. And this is what it looks like now this piece from here you can see it better actually okay now let's make a template i'm just gonna mark it roughly so i can cut the paper closer and then we're gonna make it more precise Remember this trick? Yeah, it works every time. Wow. Now if we are only able to bend it <laughs> the way we want it. Yeah, I'm gonna tuck it where I can, where it is fitting, and then the rest, we're gonna just push it, hammer it, bend it with pliers and whatever. All right, it's all tucked in. All gaps are pretty good. This is what it looks like outside. So I'm gonna weld it all over the place, everywhere, here, here, everywhere. And I'm gonna bring you back. There you go. It's all welded. I think it looks good. 
so that's it if you think i'm gonna grind it you're wrong <laughs> yeah okay okay i'll grind it just a little bit all right that's it I'm not doing more than that all right so now we can cut this mess here extend this flange to match with this flange like this okay so the lower a post should be finished all right so now we can start with this repair here on top and this is the flange that i cut from here so just so i can have the profile so i can make a piece for here first and then we're gonna make i don't know if we're gonna make a separate piece or we're gonna make one all the way to there we'll see but it's a simple patch so i'm not gonna hold you here i'm gonna make it and i'm gonna bring you back all right so this is repaired here it was pretty simple just an angle piece but i cut the flange shorter because this is where the seal needs to fit maybe it needs to be even shorter but i can always shorten it uh, and then i made this piece that fits here perfectly And once we weld it, we're gonna spot weld these two as well. And we're gonna be done with the top of the A post. All right, it's welded and ground. So now all I need to do is do some spot welds here, pinch these together. I know they're spread apart, but but they should come together, you see? It's all done. Welded, ground, spot welded, and this part here is completed. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the seal back on to make sure that it still fits properly. Maybe even the door. We're gonna measure the six inches to the deck and we're gonna drill the holes so we can have the seal exactly where we had it before well it looks like everything still fits nicely so we didn't change anything by <laughs> fixing that because sometimes you know things twist and shift but here everything is fine it looks like this gap is a little bit too big but it's not when you latch it it's gonna become good also this gap looks like it is too small and here but this gap is a little bit too big so the whole door will shift backwards right now I can't shift because I need to remove shims from behind the striker and uh, I don't want to do that but I'm confident that I can move the door like a 16th which is gonna help this gap a little like I'm not worried about these gaps right now so so I think this is a good point to end this video. I, it's actually early in the morning, but I decided that I'm gonna end this video here and I'm gonna start a new one with the rest of the work that needs to happen under the seal. Well, in this case, um, I just wanna take a moment to thank everybody who is supporting this channel, whether it is financial support or just by uh, subscribing, sharing and all that good stuff. It is all valuable to me whether it's financial or not. Uh, because spreading the word about this channel around the world is uh, helping me get more subscribers and get paid a little bit more by YouTube. But also the financial support that some people are giving me through Patreon or PayPal, it is really, really appreciated, guys. So one more time, thank you for everything. If you're not a Patreon yet, or if you want to find ways to support the channel financially, you can find all the details in the description of the video. You can do it through Patreon or just sending PayPal transfers to elin.yakov.com. 
and all that helps a lot guys it helps me spare time to edit those videos because they take a lot of time and if i don't get anything in return for that my time is going to be more valuable here in the garage not in front of the computer but your help your support is helping me spare that time and keep editing the videos so thank you guys thank you so much so anyways just a quick reminder there's a facebook group called rusty beauties that you can join too and it is a nice place where you can share pictures or videos about your project you can promote your businesses you can sell parts or you can look for parts or cars it is like a rusty beauties community where everybody helps each other so you're welcome to join just go to groups on facebook search for rusty beauties and it's gonna show up so with that said guys i'm gonna sign off and i'm gonna finish this video here so i can start the next one <laughs> it starts in a few minutes so thanks for watching guys Bye.